Hi and welcome or welcome back to the Citizen Channel and uh, another feature, another episode of Dream Debuts, yes, and the clues in the pictures behind me and on the thumbnail that you've watched before this started, we're going to look at Sergio Aguero of course and it was a dream debut wasn't it, we're going to go back to the 15th of August 2011 and talk a little about bit about the background to the game and the background to Sergio and uh, what even what was happening perhaps in the UK at the time. You tend to forget all these years later as I'm recording this, uh, almost 11 years to the day. Yeah, background. On the 23rd of May 2011, Sergio Aguero announced on his official website that he wanted to move from Atletico Madrid and formally asked to be released from his contract. On the same day that Aguero officially became a Manchester City player, a little bit later on, Atletico host a 2011-12 Europa League qualifier against Stromsgodset IF, uh, where a group of Atletico fans, a bit unhappy, brandished Aguero We Hope You Die banners in a reaction to the striker's transfer. He previously stated his desire to stay, stay and see out his contract with the club just weeks before this uh, requesting of a transfer at the end of May. On July the 28th, City confirmed that Aguero had signed a five-year contract with the club and the fee in the region of £38 million. Uh, he was given the number 16, of course, he would change that uh, into his career and started wearing the name Kun Aguero on his shirt and a lot of commentators had fun pronouncing that, that's for sure. To us, he was always Sergio, wasn't he? Recognised as one of the hottest properties in Europe at the time. Sergio said of himself and the move to City, I like tricks, I like to dazzle, I like to be able to score goals. Every so often there is a total revolution in football and someone needs to be revolutionary who starts things off. That's me. Okay, He had an idea what was going on, the, the change of the climate in English football, didn't he, even then? How was City doing well? Of course, we had high hopes, didn't we? We just lifted the FA Cup the previous season and finished third to qualify for the Champions League. And a tilt at the title was, was a minimum requirement this season for City. And it was an expectation that the signing of Aguero, uh, a big signing, uh, our sort of uh, banner signing, if you like, of the season would help fire us to league glory. Uh, a little amount of 44 years since the last time we won the uh, top division title pre-season yeah he didn't leave obviously till July so he was a bit unfit Mancini said and pre-season he was an unused substitute at Wembley in the defeat against United in the Community Shield and say so it was no surprise when he did obviously get to this game against Swansea City that he would start on the subs bench Swansea City yeah they became they'd just become the first Welsh club to play in the Premier League and the first in almost 50 years to reach the top tier with the promotion the the season before. They were managed by Brendan Rodgers and they got through to the Premier League by winning the playoffs at Wembley. A 4-2 win over Reading, they'd finished third in the Championship. The top scorer was a guy called Scott Sinclair. I think we know him, don't we? He was their top scorer of, of that season. And sign of the times, yeah, just a quickly, quickly away from football. England was still getting over the London riots, uh, which, as the name suggests, started in London, but affected most of the big cities between the 6th and the 11th of August that year. Swagger Jagger, I remember that, was the UK, I'm not going to sing it, was the UK number one by Cher Lloyd. Amy Winehouse, who literally just uh, sadly passed away three weeks previously, uh, and Back to Black was the number one in the album charts. And the in betweeners movie was packing in and packing them in as the most popular UK cinema release. That was all in and around the fifteenth of August. So at eight pm kickoff at the newly named the newly named Etihad Stadium. Yeah, I forgot it was twenty eleven. Thought it was a little bit later when we started calling it the Etihad on a typical damp, drizzly, wet Manchester autumn night. Starting eleven on the night, Hart, Richards, Lescott, Company. De Jong, Yaya Torre, Silva, Jekyll, Barry, Johnson and Cliche. And the subs, Kolarov, Milner, Balotelli, Taylor, Savic, Zabaleta and of course our own Sergio. Mancini again decided to say keep him on the bench. Might have been a fitness problem, might have been just not to throw him throw him straight into the into the fray. Uh, we're not too sure of his decision. It was probably probably a fitness thing, just give him the last half an hour. That seems to be the plan with old Mancini. 
And Vaughan, the Swansea keeper, was also having his debut that night. And he was kept very, very busy as we get to the game. I mean, throughout the first half, uh, there were a number of chances. Some OK saves, some good saves. David Silva and Gareth Barry both hit the bar. And Swansea, I think, were happy to go in at 0 0 at half time. So, no, still no sign of uh, Sergio Aguero. Although, of course, Mancini wasn't averse to making an early substitution. He has pulled players off in the first half before now. But the second half would see a change. I mean, all this pressure City had had in the first half was bound, was bound to change things and bound to come to fruition in the second half. City finally got their noses in front. Thanks to Edin Dzeko with a nice side foot from six yards after a save from a key, from the keeper Vorm again from a shot from a guy we don't want to speak about now, but uh, I'll leave that to your imagination who that is. And moments later, yes, uh, as one nil up, he decided to Mancini he didn't mess about Mancini. Not something Pep would have done, I don't think. Not at one nil up, uh, he might have waited a little bit longer, but he. Uh, just straight away, Nigel De Jong was probably forced into it. Nigel De Jong was De Jong. Nigel De Jong was limping, so obviously perhaps forced Mancini's hand a little bit, but he brought uh, Aguero on as a replacement for De Jong. Uh, and it became, of course, the Aguero show then from the 59th minute onwards. Within five mi- nine minutes of coming on, he'd had, a, he'd had a chance earlier, then nine minutes later he scored his first goal, which showed his striker's instincts, his sniffer, his goal poaching instincts. Uh, he ghosted in at the back post for a tapping from across from fullback Mika Richards after some good work from Yaya Tori. So that that was good enough on his debut. Nice little simple goal at the back. But he then turned provider. Yeah, he then got an assist, we call it these days, don't we? After chipping over the oncoming keeper, I think Jekko had fed him through. It took a deflection from the defender. And it looked to be going out for a goal kick, but he definitely managed to flick it back into the danger zone and into the path of David Silva to score the goal. When you look back on replays, it did look perilously close to been over the goal line but hey we got away with it and it counted so we won't worry too much about that and with the crowd thinning uh, as it normally did I well I certainly was still there with the crowd thinning and it got to the 90th minute plus uh, he rounded off his fantastic debut by scoring again in injury time with a some say 30 yard strike some say 25 let's split the let's split the difference for 27 and a half yard strike and it's some some say it went to the top corner but it hit the net quite low down but right in the corner the corner of the net and poor old Vorm who'd had a good debut couldn't do anything about it and he scored his second goal yep as far as us the fans were concerned it's the start we wanted he got a rapturous welcome of course when he'd come on uh, as a 59th minute substitute and he got a rapturous welcome all night and lead us to say his debut and his debut season was also something very, very special, wasn't it? What was said after it, what was said by the press, by the various media, his 30-minute debut got rave reviews from from many sources. The Manchester Evening News said, Aguero had an explosive impact in a fragile lead over a game. Swansea sided to an emphatic victory with two goals, one a stunning power and an assist. When you consider Aguero's only had one week in England and training, his display was phenomenal. Yeah, well, at least it was. Sky Sports says Sergio Aguero began his City career with an immediate impact after a half an hour cameo. So him score two and grab an assist in a 4 0 rout of Swansea. The £38 million Argentine stole the show, including a stunning last minute strike that demonstrated why it could be the key to a title challenge from Mancini's side. Yeah, this was on Monday Night TV, wasn't it? Monday Night Football, this one. Barry Glenn Denning of The Guardian simply said, Sergio Aguero came off the bench, scored two and create a third on a marvellous debut for Manchester City. Martin Samuel of the Mail said, City salute a new hero as Aguero inspires second half goal feast. Gold.com said, Blues opening game of the season became a one-man show as the Argentine debutant lifts up the Etihad with a brilliant display from the bench. And the mirror simply said, City's £38 million man. You have to mention the figure, don't they? Man, Aguero steals the show. He certainly did. And we'll leave a, a slightly less, well, not enthusiastic, but always with a bit of proviso, a slightly less enthusiastic Mancini, unless obviously we're 2-1 down in a crucial game at the end of the season when it gets a bit more animated. But, uh, yeah, his, his comments after the game, I'm not surprised, he said, because I know him well. But, yeah, <laughs> he's just signed for us. Former manager Roberto Mancini said after the game, he's a fantastic striker and I still don't think he's 100% yet. 
Yeah, well, he couldn't be, could he? Because he's been training with us for only 10 days. He can improve. <laughs> he certainly did. But it was still important for him to score on his debut. He needs to do more training. And he's still recovering from playing in the Copa America. But I am really happy because they were important goals. We were all pretty happy, Roberto. Let's face it, we knew, didn't we? We knew he had something special in Sergio Aguero. And it was all kicked off by that dream debut against Swansea City on Monday night at a wet Etihad Stadium on the 15th of August 2011. Were you there that night, guys? Uh, I was in the third tier. I think the ticket's been probably on here somewhere. I think it was in the third tier of the um, East Stand, is it called, or the, uh, what we call uh, laughably the Kipax now but, uh, of that stand. But uh, were you there? Let me know your memories, what, what you remember. I just remember it being a great night and I'd be thinking, hey, we've got something special here. And I, th I think, obviously, <laughs> it proved to be correct, didn't it? Thanks for joining me, guys. Until we meet again, please stay safe, please. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.